happy Friday, everybody. It has been, it has been a great week and I'm really looking forward to the weekend ahead. I think this piece may look familiar to some of you. This was the Prairie Schooler piece that I was working on back when we first started doing Friday Off the Grid. So for those of you who have been joining with me for the last year, this may feel like a bit of an old familiar friend. I know it sure does for me. I've been in a bit of a holiday spirit lately because I've been working really hard on the Evertote holiday collection and it made me think about all of the Christmas pieces, Santa pieces, uh, snowman and snow and holiday pieces that I have in my stash that need finishing. And I knew that this one is, you know, mostly completed. So I figured it was time that my reindeer and my Santa got ahead. So I've left my scroll rods loose just for now because I thought I would quickly scroll down and share with you what I already have done on this project. This is Prairie Schooler booklet 96, the Woodland Santas. There are four designs, Woodland Santas, there we go. So there are these four designs included in the booklet. Again, that's booklet 96. And I am stitching these vertically. So all on one piece of fabric. And I already have my first, my first Santa is complete with the partridge, the pair of partridge. They're not in pear trees, they're in pine trees. However, this, you may recognize if you weren't watching over a year ago, this is the, um, the piece that I use as the header on our Friday Off The Grid Facebook group. So if you recognize this, maybe you've seen it at the top of your Facebook group page when you join us on Friday. Ooh, there's a bit of a hair there. There we go, that's better. These bunnies are so cute at the bottom. Okay, so working my way vertically up. Since this, I know that everything below here is complete, I'm going to make it so that it's convenient for where I want to stitch. And I can see that I actually did something I never usually do, and I really don't recommend this. I actually left a needle in this project when I put it away last year, and you shouldn't do that in case it is a long time before you return to your project. It may, you know, leave a mark on your fabric, so not recommended. Anyway, there we go. Puppy needle minder. We'll just tighten this up a little bit. Get my tension a bit better. And I am going to get started with that, the head of my reindeer. Because I know it is 3781 DMC. This is all DMC. 3781 is the color. going for and I had it ready to go so the way I stitch when it's two threads of DMC is I take one long strand and I loop the needle in the middle so again if you missed this trick before six strands of DMC held together with those fingers and pull one strand out at a time as you hold on to the other one and then just straighten that out it makes it very simple it's an easy way to separate one strand of floss and let's see where's my needle get this threaded up I think I said this before, I think I have to go back to the eye doctor. I 
I think my eyes are changing faster than my glasses can keep up with. Um, though the glasses were pretty pricey, so I'm not looking forward to what they have to tell me. Anyway, I am going to treat myself to a little bit of thread heaven today. So just lightly drag my thread through the thread heaven. It's a thread conditioner. You can use beeswax. You can use, um, I've heard that there is a silicone ear plug uh, that you can just buy at the at the drugstore that is apparently the same compound that is used in Thread Heaven. Just makes the thread nice and smooth, glides through your fabric easily. Oh, I'm gonna keep doing that, knocking the camera every time I flip my frame up. I'll try to be a little more careful. There we go. Um, okay, so ready to go, and I just have to check my pattern. What have I got? One, two, three, four there. This is on one of the original cardstock, you know, the nice thick original patterns, and it's just I I love those old versions. I prefer them over to the new, uh, the way that Hoffman is printing them now on the paper. They're, they're thinner, they're, the, the print is not very easy to read. I find I have to photocopy and enlarge the print in order to be able to read it. But no complaints here. This is one of the original ones. This is a pattern that was produced in 2001. An oldie but a goodie, 2001. Still seems like yesterday, doesn't it? When you're past a certain age, I think anything in the 2000s still seems brand new, even though this was 17 years ago. Holy cow. You know, there's nothing better than a good prairie schooler. I just love stitching on them. The colors are basic and simple. The designs are sweet. They are just a pleasure to stitch. Stitching a prairie schooler is like watching a movie and eating popcorn, isn't it? It's just that simple pleasure. Feels nice. Everything about it is enjoyable. I am stitching this. Oh, this is it, you know, it's a definitely a 32 count linen. It's not smaller than that. It's not a 36 because normally two threads on a 36 feels a lot tighter to me. And 28, I'm always questioning the coverage because I do like a full coverage. 32 back in the at the time when I was purchasing these items for my stash. 32 was my fabric of choice for pretty much everything. Nowadays, I find that my my purchasing habits have been gravitating always towards uh, 40 count, or even now, my last purchase that I shared on the last Velocitube episode that I did, even a 46 count linen. So it's kind of nice sometimes to go back to these older whips on the slightly what feels like bigger fabric to me now and see how quickly those stitches make the project come to life. Good old DMC 3781. Prairie Schooler tends to use the same colors for many, many of their designs. It's also a comforting, it's a bit of a comforting thing. You know, when you look at a prairie schooler, you're probably going to have most of the DMC in your stash because you've probably stitched a prairie schooler before and uh, you have all the colors in your stash. So speaking of prairie schooler, I recently joined the Facebook group 
and I am going to get the name wrong because it's on my phone, obviously, and I am recording this on my phone, but I want to say Prairie Schooler students or students of Prairie Schooler. I can't quite remember the exact title of the group, but I am going to link it down below because it's a lovely group with, you know, beautiful, beautiful stitching that pops up in your feed. It doesn't get any better. You know, my com com combination of Friday off the grid stitchers and now all of these beautiful Prairie Schooler designs showing up in my feed. I am loving Facebook. It's finally become, you know, Caroline's version of Facebook filled with stitching and knitting too because we are learning how to knit socks and I've got my fiber friends. Friday night group is on there as well. So I finally have a Facebook feed that is full of things that I love. But getting back to this Prairie Schooler group, there was a, someone posted a link a couple hours ago that the Prairie Schooler website has been updated and there is a link, there is a freebie pattern on the site and it is the cutest, cutest little owl and you know, it says who, who, and it's just a, it's a small you could probably stitch it up quite quickly and either do a pin it, a pillow finish or a flat fold finish, or even a, um, you know, you could do one in miniature, something crazy like one over one on a 32 count and turn it into a scissor fob or, um, you know, something for your keychain. It's a very sweet design, totally free and I will see, I will also include the link in the drop down box below in case you are not on Facebook and you don't want to join the Prairie Schooler group. I'll make it easy for you to find that freebie pattern. So this design now is not leaving my floor frame until this one is finished because I would like to have, I would like to start on the third one before we get to Christmas 2018. That's my goal. Okay, two more here. There we go. So I think that that's attainable. This whip will not be leaving the floor frame until it's finished. So I hope you know what that means. That means that probably next week's Friday off the grid is going to also be stitching Santa. But maybe only two weeks. Let's hope for a finish. We're going to hope for a finish. And then in three weeks time, Friday off the grid, we'll have a different project. I'm thinking I'm tempted to switch to my Quaker diamonds and do a couple of episodes chatting with you over my Quaker diamonds, because it has been a while since I worked on that. And I saw uh, Chuck on our Friday night Facebook group. He has finished and had his framed that I saw recently. And it is stunningly beautiful just stunningly beautiful so anyway Quaker diamonds that's on the menu coming up there we go my little pink and green scissors again today scissors different scissors make me very happy when I go to the cottage I know I get to use my owl scissors and I love them they have cute little owls on them and when I stitch downstairs I have my scissors that have a scissor fob on it that my friend Heidi gave to me which reminds me of her all of these little special memories tucked up into our supplies There we go. A little bit of there. Oh, 
I love using beeswax as well. Beeswax is probably my preferred thread conditioner. And I know Polly sent me uh, some, oh, the name of it has escaped me and I use it all the time. It's the bees, it's the special little beeswax that comes in a little round pot. Oh, I'll show you next week because I'm going to have to go find it. It's downstairs. It's the one I use downstairs and the thread heaven is the one I've just got up here sitting on my floor frame. So when you have something, we try to use it up, right? So speaking of the cottage, we had a wonderful Thanksgiving, a really, really wonderful Thanksgiving. Our, my parents were there. My parents came up this year. They had terrible colds, terrible, terrible. My father was very, very um, stuffed up, very congested when they arrived. And fortunately, by the time they left, I think he was feeling a little bit better. And my mom came down with it on the Sunday, the day that we were due to go over for Thanksgiving dinner. So unfortunately, my poor mom had to had to stay behind because she just wasn't feeling up to it. You know, with that feeling when you first come down with that really bad cold virus and you just feel like you want to go and hide in your bed and sleep until you wake up and you feel better. So my poor mom, but anyways, we brought her home a, a plate of food from the dinner, from the meal. And, uh, I think she liked that. So mom and dad, if you're watching this, mm -hmm. I hope that you're both feeling better so far we don't seem to have caught it the really terrible part from you but we're all a little bit sniffly but definitely nothing like what what mom and dad had oh did i go one too far i think i did hang on a second here yes i did okay so i'm gonna have to back my way out this is the only thing about stitching with a needle in the middle if you have to frog out, you have to reverse engineer your stitching. You have to stitch backwards. Otherwise, you have to, um, you know, cut your needle out. And so if I'm careful and don't snag my thread, I can just unstitch it if I catch myself in time. Obviously, if I had a whole section that was wrong, I would have to rip it out. Okay, so here's where we start... Ooh, I get to start the ear. All right, so we're gonna skip, we're gonna skip a stitch here. There we go. First part of the ear. phone has just gone to low battery power so I'm hoping that I can get the rest of the recording done on this before it conks out we'll see what we can do I had to laugh last week when I was talking about pumpkin pie and my dislike of pumpkin pie and I got so many messages about pumpkin pie which was so fun first of all um, I was corrected in my statement that pumpkin was a vegetable and I did know this, but you know, to me, to me, pumpkin's like a vegetable, even though it's not pumpkin is a fruit, but I still stand by my assertion that I just don't like it. Now, however, somebody mentioned and who it is, is escaping me at the moment, but she mentioned that she puts a little shot of bourbon and I know I'm saying that terribly, bourbon. There we go. She puts a shot of bourbon in her, I, I see that OU and I want a bourbon. Anyways, little side note there. She puts that in her, in her pumpkin pie. And I think that just might sway me over the edge. Maybe. I still like pumpkin or apple better. 
And the, I did have quite a few people agree with me that pumpkin pie just shouldn't be a thing. Look at that. My reindeer, after a whole year, has an ear. It only took me a year. But that's okay. It's all good. I'll work my way across. When I was first stitching this last year, um, I was working on the hindquarters for quite a while. So there were a number of jokes about stitching the reindeer's backside, which was quite funny. So once again, it is actually Thursday here for me in London, Ontario. I'm recording this video one day early so that it will be ready to go in time for our traditional Friday night stitched together. And I will be late joining in tomorrow night's Facebook um, sharing because Tomorrow is my wedding anniversary. John and I have been married for 22 years tomorrow. So we are going out for dinner. We're going to go and celebrate at a local restaurant that's a favorite. And we're headed out at 7 p.m. So I probably won't be home and stitching again until about 9.30 or 10 o'clock. So I will check in on Facebook when I get home, but I'm going to have this video ready to go. I'm going to preload it tonight and set it to publish at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so that those of you who are starting right away at 6 o'clock, then we can have a visit. Tomorrow is also when the Fiber Friends, we are getting together tomorrow afternoon to record our next podcast, which I always look forward to. I have some knitting to share and it's always, it's always fun hanging out with my friends. And speaking of hanging out with my friends, I'm actually seeing those girls tonight because we are doing something very fun. We are going to Sarnia tonight to participate in a glass fusing workshop glass fusing for some reason that's like a that's hard to say properly so that people understand what you're actually saying glass fusing uh i have no idea what we're making i have nothing i have no clue what we're doing other than my friend said hey do you want to do this it looks like fun be a fun night to get together and i said sure so this is something that Adrian and I are going to do. We're driving in from London tonight, well, this afternoon, and we're going to meet Dawn and Lisa, who are uh, the Codependent Knitters podcast. And so we're going to hang out with them tonight. And then I suspect we're going to talk about our evening on the podcast tomorrow. So that's going to be fun. All right, I am at the end of my thread here. There we go. Let's see. I know I, know I keep shaking the camera when I move my frame. I'm sorry. Thread myself in. using a Perman needle today that I purchased back before Thread and I closed their shop. These are Perman of Copenhagen needles. My favorite size is the 28. I pretty much use 28s on everything, mainly because I like how it feels in my hand. Um, so $9, so about $10 Canadian 
for 25 needles. I like to buy them in bulk. That's probably why all of my needle minders, I, I have a few needle minders up around me and that's probably why they have like 10 needles on all of them because I never throw them out. But I did get that little container a few weeks ago at the Hamilton Stitch In. So I really should, I really should get rid of a few, a few of the older needles. I think I once was told it was recommended that you change your needle with each project. Whether or not that is accurate, I don't know. I tend to use a needle a lot more than just one project, mainly because I it takes me so long to finish a project and I'll use the same needle for lots of different projects at the same time. I just tend to keep them on the needle minder and move my needle minders around from project to project. So it's hard to say how often I actually change them. But I did, I pulled out a fresh needle. Oh no, wait a minute. That's not true. This was, this was the needle that was in my project. Oh, that's right. I meant to use a new needle, uh, but then I was distracted and chatting. And I, because I didn't realize I'd left a needle in this project when I put it away. Aha, uh -huh. caught myself there. This is act. I, who knows how old this needle is. Feels pretty good though. So Anyways, so I, I guess I lied. It's not a permanent needle. Who knows? It's an unknown. Let's see where we are. That's the top of the ear. Am I on that side with my three? Yes, I am. Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Okay. This is very exciting seeing the head of the reindeer finally come to life. I can see it on my wall. I'm still undecided as to how I'm going to finish it. I originally thought that I would frame it one long excuse me one long piece and maybe have the mat cut out oh look at that I just put my thread in a little knot glad I caught that before I pulled it through there we go that's better Just working my way over the eye. I have to count, be careful because the eye goes in here. The eye of the reindeer, not the eye of my needle. Um, and now I've completely lost track of what I was just saying. Maybe you'll remind me. If it was something that I was in the middle of saying and I stopped what I was talking about, you can remind me. I'm probably not going to really rewatch this for editing today because I just need to get it. Um, we're just having a casual visit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just have to remember to put those links in the drop down box below for the Prairie Schooler group on Facebook and the freebie pattern. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so here's where the bottom of the eye is, there we go. So yes, married for 22 years. We were obviously babies when we got married. Well, I was, my husband's way older than me. <laughs> Three. 
We have been having some terrible heat here. It has been humid for the last four or five days. Humid X values yesterday and today, it was about 35 degrees Celsius, which is very hot. And for October in Canada, you know, out in, in Alberta, they have been having snowstorms. So to have such diverse weather patterns, um, and today, today, so today is Thursday. Yesterday we got up to 35 degrees with the humid X and it didn't really cool much, cool down much overnight. Uh, we woke up and it was still about 20, 25 degrees, but it is dropping to four degrees Celsius tonight with an overnight low of four and tomorrow I have heard the low tomorrow is supposed to be plus three. So it, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's crazy, but I'm so grateful that it's going to be finally starting to cool down because this heat and humidity just, they bum me out. I am ready for snow. Yes, I am. You heard that. I am ready for snow. It is just my favorite, favorite, favorite time of year. My favorite place is the cottage, but my favorite time of year is the cold weather and the snow and all of the holiday traditions and special things that we get to do in the cold weather. So I can't wait. Cannot wait. So yes, I've been sewing up a storm, sewing up a storm. I've got some new plaid bags that are in the shop. Blue plaid reminds me of a Macintosh toffee box. Which I love. That's just it reminds me of my childhood. And I didn't eat a lot of it, but I do remember it was such a special thing when there you'd see that box and you knew that the toffee inside was just gonna be the greatest thing since sliced bread. I'm amazed I still have all my teeth. Anyway. Two, three, four, five. Yes, anything caramel or toffee. We could get into that whole caramel, caramel debate again, but it, it's caramel. At least that's how I say it. And that doesn't necessarily make it right, but I know it is caramel. One, two, three, four, five. So there's some blue plaid, there's some green plaid, and there's a few flat totes, a few wedge totes, lots of different plaid, cozy, cozy, cozy bags. I love plaid. I just love it. All right. I am hoping that I can eke out the rest of his nose with the rest of the thread that I have left. Do you think I can do it? I don't know. We're going to play a little bit of thread chicken here, I think. Let's see if we can do it. I have to get all the way back and then three stitches on this side. I don't know. I think it might be a bit tight. We're getting there. Okay, I have six stitches left to do. Thread is getting closer, closer. <laughs> this is excitement on a Friday night, isn't it? Watching Caroline play a little game of thread chicken. Honestly, I'm so glad that we understand each other because normal people, normal people, non-stitchers, would kind of think we were crazy. 
I think they do think we're crazy. My family's used to me now. Oh my goodness, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it. I need to do two more. Two more. Okay. Three more legs. That's one. Oh my goodness, this is feeling a bit snug. Two. <laughs> one more. One more. Oh my goodness. There we go. I did it. <gasps> Ta-da! Believe it or not, that's his nose. And then the bridle. The bridle is stitched in here. And then there's a bit of the rain here. And then Santa's holding the reins up here. So let's sew that little teeny bit of floss into the back. That's very satisfying, I have to say, when you can use up your floss right to the very, very, very end. There. Caroline, one, thread, zero. I won. Good. Okay, so let's flip this back around. Let's have a little appreciative look at my at my reindeer. I went now I'm, when I had to just move my frame there. I'm wondering if when I've been stitching up here and maybe you didn't actually see me show you where the nose was there. Look at that. He's got a head started, and so I'm gonna finish this hopefully tonight, late late tonight after my glass fusing workshop or maybe even tomorrow night after I get home from dinner. This will be my project tomorrow night when I get some stitching time for Friday Off The Grid. I love it, it's so pretty. Look at the saddle. I love everything about it. <sighs> well, happy weekend everybody. I hope you have a great, great weekend with lots of stitching time for yourself, some time with some family and friends and that you just get to do something that you enjoy. I will see you on Monday for a FlossTube update. Happy stitching. <laughs>